What's up guys? Nothing like getting a smoker going early in the morning. Today I'm going to be doing some barbecue with my offset smoker. I'm going to be using pecan wood, getting it started, maintaining the heat with some charcoal, and then using uh, pecan wood as the uh, fuel source. This video is going to be kind of a long video, so go ahead and get comfortable, put some headphones in, kick back, and uh, enjoy the vid. For those of you who are new subscribers and didn't know, I ended up buying this smoker with uh, frag money. I ended up selling a bunch of frags, a couple frag packs, until I was able to get this and I picked it up. And uh, ever since then, I've been using it. It's pretty, pretty new smoker, but uh, it's very nice and uh, it's getting pit to use so far. I already cooked at least five times on it, and uh, I'm just gonna keep cooking until I get become good at it. But anyways, I hope this video motivates you to go out to the grocery store, pick up some meat, uh, and barbecue yourself today. Today's menu is going to be some pork ribs, two slabs, a little thing of brisket, and then I'm going to top it off with some uh, chicken. Um, the wood that I'm using, since this is an offset smoker, I maintain the heat with charcoal, and then I use uh, pecan wood. Uh, I cut the pecan wood in small portions, control it with the air vent, and go from there. Um, there's a few people out there that are into it. I just wanted to share this with you, but uh, A. Vasquez Reefing, he, I talk to him a lot on Instagram, and also I'm on Instagram, so make sure you follow me there too, 915-MANG, M-A-N-G. Uh, what I did is uh, I smoked the ribs for about four hours, and then uh, I put some butter and a little bit of honey then I went ahead and topped off with some uh, chicken, some drumsticks, smoked these, and then I continued to do the brisket and the ribs so that uh, the bone just falls off the meat. Go ahead and feel free to leave a comment below. Tell me what you guys like to grill, if you guys are going to grill today after watching this video. I hope so. And uh, I just wanted to share something real quick with you. Um, the Down Under Aussie Reefers, they don't have uh, smoker grills like this. Uh, it's kind of a little different thing. Uh, at least that's what they said to me on uh, one of the comments. Now, let's go ahead and talk about some reef stuff. Uh, I've been, I got a little bit of things going on right now, and we're going to get to that. But uh, I got some changes happening right now. Uh, what I did was I cut all the flow off in the tank, and uh, I wanted to go ahead and record this Xenia. Now, this Xenia is a hit or miss. I've already fragged it. Several times I've had big chunks. I've thrown away those big chunks. And uh, out of that, those chunks that I threw away, I guess they just pop up and then just start growing. They are cool, but you got to keep an, keep control of where you have it because they will come back. And uh, if you don't maintain your tank, uh, your Xenia is just going to take off and grow. Now, the only time that I do get to watch this pulse is when I turn the flow off and the reason I turned off my flow is because I started messing around with my tank and I started messing around with the flow itself um, I right now I have Q2 QP 16s um, from Coral Box I ended up ordering them from uh, Reef Breeders LED um, I got them they're they're great pumps but I wanted to go ahead and add some more flow to my tank and what I ended up doing was I added an other RW15 plus the two QP16. So I got three pumps in my tank. Now the flow itself is just being held, handled by the power heads. Uh, my return pump does not do any crazy flow for me at all. And in fact, my return pump, the nozzles, the lock line, I have it shooting back into the overflow drains because when I turn off the pumps, I want to have the water as steel as possible so I can do some top down shots. Now, I did increase my flow a lot by adding the RW15. Um, the reason why I did it is because I wanted my SPS to grow more. I wanted color. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, they say high flow tanks are going to help you achieve that. So we'll see. Um, the QP16s, I did have quite a bit of flow. But, you know what, I had this RW15 sitting around. So I'm going to go ahead and use it in this tank. You can uh, see all the detritus floating around, and I, I was kind of 
messing around with the uh, wave settings. I put it on W1, wave 1, which is kind of a big wave. And I, the speed I put it like in the middle. Um, the reason I'm kind of curious is because you can see everything just blowing around. And uh, after I put that setting, it seemed to be okay uh, because I lowered it down to half. When you mess around with your flow and your lights, uh, you got to kind of keep an eye on your enemies. The reason why is because they'll walk around if they're not happy. And when they walk around, you know what happens. They end up stinging other corals, sticks. They just wreak havoc by walking around in the tank. As you can see, I have tons of detritus. I'm still not running any filter socks on this tank. Um, maybe I'll go ahead and get some. Uh, I do, however, have filter floss by the return and um, by the drains, actually. I do have filter floss. And uh, hopefully, you know, this stuff will clear out pretty soon, uh, probably within an hour or so. It does look really ugly right now with the tank all cloudy, but I'm very happy about it because you can just see all the detritus just flowing off of the rocks, off of the sand bed. What little sand bed that I do have, um, which is good because of the flow, I since I added more flow. Now, before that, I, was, I did have a sea squirt. Uh, which is basically a fancy turkey baster and I was hitting those rocks with that sea squirt trying to get as much detritus as I could off. Um, I do want to show you the 20 gallon long. You know, I've been talking about, you know, I'm going to get a 40 gallon breeder. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Well, this is the last that you're going to see of the 20 gallon long because I actually did pick up a uh, 40 breeder. You know, the 20 gallon long is an awesome tank. You can get them right now still for $20. Now, uh, Petco, they were doing that dollar per gallon, and it used to be that you can get a 40 gallon breeder for 40 bucks. But now, what they did, anything that's 10, 29, and 20 is dollar per gallon. Everything above that, like 40 gallon breeders, 75 gallon uh, tanks, is half off. So, the 40 gallon breeder that I got was actually uh, $50 and some change. It does suck, but you know what? Uh, it's kind of funny because um, this is not the first time I had a 40 gallon breeder. The last time I had a 40 gallon breeder, it was also a frag tank. But I ended up selling it to a buddy. And then I just ended up buying this a couple years later myself. Um, so, you know, history does repeat itself. I should have just kept on to the tank. Another thing I want to show you is that innovative marine uh, feeding thing. You just put your uh, nori on there and the fish goes at it, the yellow eye cold tank. Uh, when I do move over to a 40 gallon breeder, I'm going to move the uh, yellow eye cold tank into uh, the 180. Another thing that I'm going to do with this uh, 40 gallon is I'm going to have the Santa Monica Surf 2 algae turf scrubber running in the sump. Um, it's going to do good. I'm going to harvest and it's going to be great. The thing that I'm going to do for the lighting this is a good old old school T5 lighting uh, with a timer has moon LEDs. And I got this from my buddy Tim. Uh, Tim is, if you guys don't know, uh, I've recorded his 6 foot 120. I recorded his 90 gallon cube. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. We trade frags all the time. I Any frag that he wants, I would give it to him for free. But you know what? He just He's a good guy. He, he gives me a couple bucks. So um, that's the light that I'm going to use on the 40-gallon uh, breeder. I did try pinning on the 20-gallon long, and uh, it just looked too funny. Now, the bulb combination that I'm going to use on this uh, tank, uh, this is a four-bulb fixture. I'm going to use a Coral Plus, Blue Plus, and try to implement some type of LED. Uh, the reason why is I, I love LED. You're just not going to get the pop. From LED, the coral growth from T5, in my opinion, is the best. But the best for me is a T5 and LED combo, also known as a hybrid. Now, the next question with the uh, 40 gallon breeder is to drill or not to drill? That's the question. And I got hooked up by glassholes.com uh, with an overflow kit. Now the overflow kit that I got is the 700. I'm gonna go ahead and show you. Fast forward. Comes with everything you need. Comes with the the uh, guide right here, which is made out of wood. 
There's the website, glassholes.com. Dope aquarium stuff. Um, came with everything. Came with the drill bit because what I was going to do is get the drill bit online. Comes with the drill bit. Comes with the overflow. Comes with the bulkheads. Uh, and it's just a great product. Um, so if you're looking for a one-stop shop, go ahead and go to glassholes.com. Um, this is going to be the first time that I actually drill anything. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to do that a separate video. I'll let you know if I fail or not. Um, and check this out, man. I got some fun dip right here. Uh, I haven't had this stuff since I was a kid. Uh, and uh, you know what? I didn't share either. So as you can see, it comes with everything that you need. Uh, this just screws into the bulkhead. That black tube goes right there in the, the uh, fitting. Um, see the black tube? It goes right through the fitting. Uh, it's really well packaged and uh, a nice little bumper sticker right here. I'll be pinning this on some of my equipment. Probably my RODI uh, container, which is a brute trash can. I'm going to go ahead and open up this overflow. And uh, like I said, this is a can handle up to 700 gallons per hour. And uh, it's, a, it's a really great uh, looking overflow. I'm not just saying that. You can see for yourself in the video. Uh, I'm zooming in right here. You can see it's thick cast acrylic. And it comes with this little uh, plastic. And the, the reason that it's in there is so that it runs silent. Now, this is a single hole overflow, okay? Now, some of you are going to be like, well, I want a double overflow. You can get the double overflow. You can get the triple overflow. I think for me, this being a 40 gallon is going to be okay. Uh, the reason why is because it has the teeth. Snails are not going to get in there. Um, it's going to be okay. And uh, it's not going to overflow. It's better than an overflow box, than a hang on back overflow box. Uh, it's better just to go ahead and drill your tank. That way you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to run a little, you know, air pump on it. You're, you're just good to go. Now this overflow does come with the lid, which is why I said that I don't have to worry about snails. If you didn't have a lid on here, then I'd be a little bit worried. Plus it has the mesh. So it's like a two line of defense. The lid on top and the mesh in the bottom. And then there you go. I'm good to go. I'm gonna, I am a little bit nervous to uh, drill my tank. I haven't done it. And uh, I'll give you an update on that, how it goes. So wish me luck guys, uh, this is going to be my first time drilling a tank, this is going to be my 40 gallon breeder, I'm glad I didn't put a whole lot of money on, into it, but uh, I appreciate you guys listening and uh, geeking out with you guys, talking about reef and fish, you guys are the only ones that listen to me here, uh, because at home, you know, all the wife here is, how much did I spend on coral? Thanks guys, have a good one, like and subscribe and you guys take care.